Hey guys, this is Danny Boy. This is Earth Part 2. I'm still gonna use Edie and James. Every everything's the same. I'm not gonna change weapons, I'm not gonna change party member weapons, I'm not going to change spec. I don't think anybody leveled up even. Um, I did put a point in Arms Master, because I had a spare point. But, yeah, all the same. You know what, I will put a point- no, I'm not gonna put a point in fitness. Screw it, let's get to it. So it begins. So, let's see... Final thoughts on the Infiltrator? I think I've already talked about that to a good extent. Oh, no wonder. I was wondering, why didn't that last guy detonate and explode and take extra damage? Because I don't have cryo ammo on right now. James just died. That was weird. Weird. I was paused and it didn't unpause. Oh, stay right there, stay right there, stay right there. Oh, there's even two. Come on, one of you, one of you, come on. I've talked about my final thoughts to an extent. Basically, I enjoyed the class. I thought it was really fun. I did get a little bored there eventually, but all in all, I can do this all day, you idiots. Come back. Come back. But the class is definitely overpowered. Absolutely. Not even... It's not even questionable that this class is overpowered. It is. It is incredibly flexible, incredibly good in pretty much any situation. Their only weakness really is dealing with shields, and you can just use party members for that effect, respect into energy drain, and that covers that nicely, or disruptor ammo, but overload and energy drain, personally, I think, are way better dealing with shields and disruptor ammo. At least with hard-hitting weapons, which is what I favor on the Infiltrator, it wouldn't be such a big deal at all, actually, if I was using, say, rapid-fire weapons like assault rifles. Probably be a much different story, and I would have a different opinion. No, you should use that. That's fine. But... Did that mean to roll forward? I love how fast this thing reloads. Ow. Throw a grenade! There we go. I hate the cheese. I hate how cheesy this class can be. Really annoys me that it's possible. And the thing is, though, a lot of the things I did could be done in other classes if you just use combinations properly, use powers to help you get through, and just run really quick and don't get stuck behind cover and knock at enemies and whatever. But it's, it's made incredibly trivial on the Infiltrator because you can just cloak and that's that. Oh yeah, I forgot. I have... Sabotage. You sabotage. Is he immune to sabotage? I think he might be. It won't work. That's okay. Grenade. It was a lot farther behind me than I realized. There's going to be a Banshee, there's a bunch of cannibals and marauders and, and whatever. I'm going to kill the Harvester first. The Banshee will probably spawn before I manage to kill the Harvester, though, unfortunately. I really don't like where Edie is right now, either. Come on, come on, come on, die. Okay. Just in time. Sorry I didn't look at the explosion. I often will turn away from grenades and... And Harvester's exploding just because it's a waste of my time and I just need to move and change things. <laughs> That's generally why I do it, just because I need to get into cover or something. Come on, Banshee. I actually don't have much ammo to deal with this Banshee, unfortunately. Okay, can... I can. I can use tech vulnerability on this Banshee. That's good. Seems to make quite the difference. Was that grenade a dud? I don't feel like that went off. I'm on it. Definitely need to move, though. Ammo. Wonderful. I'm 
Well, that's really, really, really easy to deal with. The combination I'm using right now, I think, is probably one of the most powerful combinations you can actually use on the Infiltrator. It's really, really, really powerful. The only thing that becomes a problem are just enemies that are really far away. Owie. Which can be an issue. Like that Harvester, for example. I couldn't really deal with him with my weapon at all. But powers worked fine. Just make up for it with party members and what have you. Now, I've said the class is overpowered. As far as nerfing them goes... I don't know. It's it's kind of a, a difficult thing to handle because it's not just one thing. It's just the combination of powers they have is really what it is. Bonus power is a big culprit. But bonus power is also really, really fun. And I don't want to get rid of bonus power. Because it's fun. I... I don't know. Tactical Cloak is also too good. It gives you way too much damage, and it gives you tremendous freedom of movement. But those things are both really, really fun. And getting rid of one or the other would totally change the class. Just turning it into a damage buff would totally change the class. And removing the damage buff would totally change the class. Now what they could do is split them into two separate powers, but that's still not very elegant. That's not a very good solution. Because then you just run into problems with cooldowns and everything. Maybe a global damage nerf? Just nerf their damage significantly? But even then... I don't know. Difficult thing to handle. I like to miss. Tech burst that nation there. I'm starting to see the potential of party member damage. James plus the his ammo power and everything is pretty ridiculous. Okay, here's what I would do to balance the infiltrator. I would get rid of sabotage. That frees up a power slot. And yes, getting rid of sabotage is problematic because that would mean only the engineer has sabotage, so somebody else would need to get sabotage, but nobody else has a free power slot, so that wouldn't work. But whatever, I think it would be for the greater good. If there's a little asymmetry in how the different classes have their powers, so be it. It wouldn't be a huge deal having sabotage unique to engineers anyway, and it's such an amazingly good skill. Infiltrators certainly don't need it. Engineers don't need it, but infiltrators even more so. So, no more Sabotage, and in place of that, I would split up Tactical Cloak into two powers. One is just Tactical Cloak, and it is as it is now. It is just a movement ability. It gives you freedom of movement, it gives you greater survivability, but that's it. No more damage bonus from Tactical Cloak. Instead, a new power to replace Sabotage would be Assassinate. Assassinate a la Mass Effect 1. It is a damage power, a burst power. It's, it's if you don't know, in Mass Effect 1, it was a power that... You use it, and your next sniper rifle shot does a lot of damage. So, bring back Assassinate, make it usable with all weapon types. It's just like Cloak is now, you use it and you do a ton of damage on your next shot. So now you've split the power up into two separate powers, and with cooldowns, you need to actually choose between using Cloak and using Assassinate. You have to actually make that choice between survivability and damage. Now this does have a second problem, in that with bonus power on Cloak, you would be able to just spec into bonus power and then use Assassinate anyway, but that still would balance things out to an extent because you would be choosing between an Assassinate and an Incinerate or your bonus power, your actual bonus power like Decoy or Energy Drain or whatever, and more so you could just make it so that you can't use Assassinate with Cloak even with bonus power, just like you can't use Marksman with the Adrenaline Rush version version of bonus power. You can't use Adrenaline Rush and then use Marksman while using Adrenaline Rush. So the same thing for Assassinate with Cloak. Something like that. That's, I guess, what I would do. That's the best solution I can come up with after thinking about it for five seconds, because I literally started thinking about this the second I started talking about it in this mission, and and that's it. So that's, I guess that's what I would do. Maybe you guys have a lot better solutions than I have. And yes, I realize this is the single player game and balance doesn't matter, and this would piss off the entire Infi community. More lag. I'm going to pause, I think, and make sure that this lag is, is gone for good. Okay, hopefully that has settled it. This has definitely been my easiest playthrough by far. It has definitely been my fastest. I think when all said and done, I'll probably have beaten the game in about 12 hours, 12 and a half hours. Compared to around 15 or so on my Sentinel, and then something like 30 to 40 on my Engineer. Granted, that was, that was plot stuff. 
That was a... I skipped all the plot and everything. There is literally over 20 hours of plot in this game. If you look at all the plot, it will literally add. And you do... Especially, if you do all the probing, you do all the probing crap and find all of the war assets and everything, that easily adds another 20, 25 hours to your game. It's pretty ridiculous. And god, my vanguard. That thing. That was easily a 40-hour playthrough. When all was said and done. Kind of want to move forward, but I'm kind of afraid to. James, that was emphatically stupid of you. <laughs> what you just did. Okay, so the goal here is to kill the Ravager. But that's kind of difficult with just a Wraith, but apparently powers do the job just fine with Tech Vulnerability. Tech Vulnerability is doubling the damage of all of my... My incinerates and the carnages and all that stuff. It's really, 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 really powerful. That's another thing. That's one of the things that makes Sabotage overpowered is tech vulnerability. Tech vulnerability is amazingly good. And entirely unnecessary. It's fun. It's fun to to kill a brute in a couple of incinerates. He's already dead. It's, it's fun to kill a brute in about five seconds. That's fun, but it's fun because it's overpowered. That's why it's fun. Key difference. Key difference. Hello. Not used to having two shots in the clip. I find myself wanting to reload prematurely. I don't remember there being husks here. Maybe I don't usually approach this from this angle. Pretty sure I just saw a grenade. Still with the lag. Maybe I need to just exit the game or something? It's nothing bad, it's just I don't like my frame rate fluctuating. It makes for poor video. What just happened there? Die. Seriously. Okay, now we get to go into the grocery store. This is definitely a nice change of pace from the Widow. I haven't even really needed to use decoy throughout the entirety of this. Die from burn damage. Apparently, their regen can actually... Out heal burn damage from an incinerate. I am expecting a 40% extra damage over 8 seconds or so. Bunch of guys over there. This is a really, really good combination. I wish I could have afforded the Wraith earlier, but I had no desire to do any probing in outer space. No outer space probing. A lot of guys in here. I'm on it. They just keep coming. That was instant. This has got to be one of the most powerful combinations you can just use in the game for party members, for weapons and powers and everything. Done. Next area. I'm not even really having any trouble with ammo or anything. Get out a decoy. Not our guidance. Something's missing with our guidance! Oh no! You can also just cheese through this area, by the way. That door is closed, but it's not locked. You can just run through here, click on the door, go through, they all despawn. Easily done. Let's see if I can get a sink kill on this guy. I can! Huzzah! And, though, you do need to worry about the fact that when you click on this, there's a bunch of enemies here. And they all shoot you as soon as the door opens, so you want to take cover. Can't really flank in here too much, either.
I can try. I missed. It's bad. A lot of players complain about the role in this game. I will admit, it did get me killed early on in my first playthrough at times. But once you just learn how to use it, and you know where if you roll next to something, you're going to take cover and you're not going to roll past it, it's really not a big deal at all. It's actually incredibly useful. Roll more often than not saves me, than kills me. It saves me from grenades all the time. I've pretty much created just a muscle reflex to always immediately roll out of a grenade. I feel like there is a single opportunity here. Yep. Dear sweet god! That is ridiculous! Unbelievable. I don't think I've ever gone through Earth this quickly before. No deaths so far. Now that I've said that, I'm probably gonna die. We're actually about to approach the finale. All that's left... ...are these brutes. And there they go. <laughs> Killed them simultaneously. This is ridiculous. This is very easy. <laughs> this class is very, very easy when you build properly, you spec properly. I've talked about optimization and how I don't bother. Right now, I'm pretty well optimized. This is pretty much an optimized combination. Normally I don't bother, but I haven't tried this before and I wanted to try it. To be honest, I really wanted to use the Wraith on this class. And this is just the build that I came up with to go with it. And I'm making up for the fact that I have... Lower Operations Master, even with my Rosenkov stuff, I'm spec for... I have pieces to give me headshot damage, I have Cryo Blast, I have Incinerate spec to go with Cryo, or rather, Cryo Ammo. And, and bonus power, and decoy, and even my party members, it's just everything is... It's not perfect, I'm not gonna say it's perfect, but it's damn close. <clears throat> close. Okay, I'm going to skip to the finale. In fact, I think we're gonna start up a new episode. So thanks guys for watching, stay tuned for more. Please, like the video if you enjoyed it, please... Sub if you like to see more Mass Effect 3 and leave comments and feedback, and I will get back to you. And, um, yeah. Next is going to be f the finale, the survival portion of this mission. Have a good one.